Hey everyone! In today's video, we're going to use the AI tool Stable Diffusion to reimagine some of the textures used in the game of Minecraft, specifically the Java version. These directions can be followed in a few different ways. If you want to go over the top like I did, you can grab a copy of the existing textures and we can remake them. The other option is we can simply make our own, completely from scratch. Being completely upfront with you, I'm not sure that these directions will be the best use of your time. I wanted to approach this more like a proof of concept, and there may be a faster way to overcome some of those challenges along the way. But what we're going to learn to do here is find and open the Java file that contains all of the Minecraft assets. We're going to copy the original assets so we can use them as a reference and somewhat of a guide. We're going to create a texture pack ourselves so that Minecraft can see and use our files. And we're going to learn how to add, edit, and manipulate our texture pack until things look more like we want. Minecraft itself is not a free program, but everything else we're going to use here, with the exception of maybe Photoshop, is going to be completely free and open source software. To get us started here, we're going to need to assume you already have Minecraft installed and an active account. Also noteworthy is that we want to have the Java version of Minecraft installed as opposed to the C-coded version. You can see here on the launcher the build and the version number. If you've gotten this up and running at least once, you should be able to navigate to the Java file known as a jar. The jar file is very similar to a zip file, if you're familiar with that. It's a library of the whole program basically compressed into a single file. We can't open it with default tools, but with the free program 7-zip, we should be able to peek inside and manipulate it however we want. I'll add a link to 7-zip in the description, and the place you want to navigate to on your system will be the users, and then your name, and the app data folder. If you don't see it right away, you may want to ensure that you have the ability to see hidden files and folders through your Windows Explorer options. As a side note, throughout my videos, you may see a different file manager. For those of you who are curious, I use one commander myself, which isn't required to do this or any part of this process, but for me, it's better. It's an easier file manager to use. I'll toss a link for that in the description as well, but again, that one's totally up to you. When you're inside of the app data folder, you want to go next into the roaming folder and then you're going to see a .minecraft folder. Inside of that, you should see a folder for versions. You should see a folder for each of the versions of Java Minecraft you have installed. And within that, you'll see a jar file. A fresh install will likely only have the one version. But if you have more than that, just pay attention to the newest one. Now, if you have 7-zip and you have Windows 10, you may be able to just right-click it and simply open it with 7-zip. If, like me, you made the mistake of installing Windows 11, you'll see that right-clicking things is almost useless nowadays. I found it easier to copy and paste the location into 7-zip and open it that way. However you manage to open this file within the program, once the file is accessible, you should see the whole structure. There's a lot here, and it could be overwhelming, but what we need is located within the assets, slash Minecraft, slash textures, and then the block folder. You'll know it when you're in there, because it should just be a list of pictures, PNG files. I took this whole folder and I just copied it to my desktop. After that, you can close 7-zip. We shouldn't really be needing it again. The structure of the jar file is an important reference though. And to save ourselves from some hassle later, our best bet is to create that structure ourselves in the same way so that things are going to go really smooth. Creating our own folder as a resource pack, we just want to add a blank assets folder inside, and then a Minecraft folder within that folder, and then a textures folder after that, and finally, block. I apologize how annoying the prep work is here, but we want to do this the right way, because simply editing the PNG files in the jar file will corrupt Minecraft, and it'll prevent you from being able to play. Trust me, I tried. For the game to recognize this folder and the stuff inside of it, we have to do a couple of things here first. First, we have to create a pack file and describe it. Then we're just going to move this whole folder structure to where Minecraft is going to look for it. So we want to head back to the root of this folder and create a blank text file next to the assets folder we just made. And we're just going to call this pack.mcmeta. Windows is going to freak out for a second because that's not a file type that it recognizes, but it's fine. We're going to use Notepad, edit the file, and you can just copy this code from the description of the video, or rewrite it to describe the pack however you want. The pack format number corresponds to the version of Minecraft I'm using here, and it should work with anything in the 1.19 version. Once that file is saved, we can take the whole folder structure and drop it in the official resource pack location, which is in app data slash Minecraft, 
and inside there's a folder called resource packs. And after you've done that, congratulate yourself. All the technical stuff is done and we can solely focus on replacing whatever textures we want one at a time. Now, this process isn't perfect. There's a variety in the types of PNG files we're gonna encounter here, but for those already familiar with the game, there's gonna be a long list of common blocks that you're familiar with. Grass, stone, logs, things like that. We have to assume at this point that you've already followed my stable diffusion tutorial, and you have that up and running on your machine. The way I set this up, you should easily be able to move in a few different directions at this point. You can remake the existing textures using image to image, or you can completely fabricate your own textures from scratch. If you don't have stable diffusion, you'll have to pause this video here and follow those directions so we're on the same page. We're gonna start with dirt, and you'll have to remember that these textures are absolutely tiny. The originals are only like 16 by 16, so there's not much point in doing all this if we're gonna make blurry crap. But unfortunately, we'd be doing way too much if each of these textures were huge. I'd advise that even though Stable Diffusion can kick out images in smaller sizes, what I noticed when I tried it is that it gives some really bad glitched looking output. I recommend keeping the settings at 512 by 512, and then we're just gonna use an image program to reduce the overall scale of everything. Also, make sure to try that checkbox that forces tiled graphics, which is absolutely perfect for something like this. At this point, go crazy generating whatever you like that's gonna look or feel good to you. Remember, we did all of that work on the forefront so that we could easily experiment with this part in a smooth way. Whatever images you like, save them directly into your custom resource pack. Follow that folder trail all the way to the end and just use the exact same names of the files we're replacing. Cobblestone.png, dark underscore oak underscore log.png, etc. The final step here is optional, but it's heavily recommended. And that's to take each of these files and reduce that size. Within Photoshop, GIMP, Krita, or any of the online tools you have available to you. Whatever you find is the easiest way to reduce the texture size without degrading the quality too much, go for it. For my examples here, I used combinations of 512 size textures, 128 size, and of course the originals beside them are incredibly obvious by comparison. This process isn't perfect for things like fire, and it seems like some of those textures here rely on transparencies to give the full effect. But I'm sure someone out there is going to go overboard and it's not going to be long before we see that too. Texture packs are designed to replace existing textures, so that's all we're actually doing here, despite it seeming to be a very convoluted process with a lot of steps. Just remember to be mindful of all the extra work we're asking of the computer when we increase the resource demands. If you start to see performance issues, you might want to dial it back a bit. I hope someone out there can take this idea and really run with it. I haven't had the time yet to sit and fully explore all the possibilities here. But remember, it's not just blocks. There's paintings and other items within the game that should be able to be changed just as easily. And any changes made within that pack folder we created should take place immediately so we can see them go on in real time. If there's enough interest, I'll dig into some of those ideas and we can see what else might be possible. But I'm not sure what kind of Minecraft interest my audience has. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. In the meantime, I appreciate your time here with me today. Thanks for watching.